Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Hotel Honolulu by Paul Theroux. I'll go briefly over the author's background, give a spoiler-free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Uh, Paul Theroux is mostly known for being a travel writer. He's been writing, uh, I believe, since the mid-70s, so he has a pretty long and established career. Uh, this is a fiction uh, work, a novel. He's done other works of fiction in the past. He's also done nonfiction travel writing. Um, this book, Hotel Honolulu, is about a uh, writer in his late 40s, early 50s, who uh, travels from the mainland U.S. to ha Hawaii to basically get a fresh start. He is put up by uh, another individual from the mainland, to be the, uh, I guess, the general manager of the hotel that this guy owns. It's a little bit of a kind of a seedy, rundown hotel. It's kind of competing against the the Hiltons and the Marriotts of the world, but it's like a 80-room hotel and in Honolulu. And the book, what it is, is it's a series of short stories as narrated by the manager of the hotel. There's, I think, 80 different chapters. Um, I'd say most of the, the chapters in the book are kind of one and done. They are covering anyone from uh, staff who works at the hotel to guests who stay at the hotel to other uh, folks around the area, locals, uh, people at other hotels. And about half of the book is the kind of the personal story of the owner of the hotel, whose name is Buddy. The narrator, the general manager of the hotel, is never named, but we learn a little bit of his background. He marries a one of the hotel workers and has a, a child with her, a daughter, um, and we also learn kind of more of his life as kind of the book goes on and, and why he's uh, kind of a semi-retired almost writer. Um, overall, the things that I liked about the book, uh, kind of the format of the book is it's, like I said, it's 80 chapters, so... The, the book is really a series of short stories more than anything else, and I think that he, the format uh, kind of fit the plot, fit the setting, excuse me, in the sense that being a hotel in Hawaii is very much a transitory thing where guests come in, stay for a couple days, and then leave, and I think that kind of fit the nature of these very, very short two to three to four page stories. Um, I think that the setting gives the author, Paul Theroux, a, a chance to kind of bring in a lot of really colorful characters who I thought were, for the most part, pretty interesting. Um, and I think the book kind of has different tones for each of these stories. Some of them are sad. I'd say most of them tend to be kind of sad or wistful. Some of them are uplifting, and some of them, um, a lot of them have to do, some of them are really depressing. Um, the subject matter kind of varies from from story to story. Um, and I'll kind of get a little bit into that when I get into the, uh, recommendations just to kind of give that subject a matter. Um, but I did like kind of the variety in the stories. I definitely felt like there wasn't any one kind of story. Sometimes when you read short story collections, the stories kind of have the same tone from story to story. And I think that this, whilst being realistic, still kind of gave you enough variation, which was nice. Um, the kind of the highlights of those stories to me, anytime we kind of dealt with the kind of clash of cultures in Hawaii, because you have individuals who are from Japan, from Korea, you have the, uh, native Hawaiians and you have the people from the mainland who are usually Caucasians and they each kind of bring something different to it. I like the character of Buddy, who's the owner of the hotel and his kind of wheelings and dealings. Um, and a lot of the book is kind of talks about kind of his his past wives, his children, his house, his uh, and kind of the people in his semi circle. So his his new wife and his lawyer and, and things like that. And it's kind of like the book reminded me in some weird ways, uh, kind of two books that reminded me of uh, formats similar to Wayside Stories um, and the sequel to Wayside Stories that I don't quite remember at the top of my head, but you have characters who are kind of the peripheral in some stories and they kind of come to the forefront in others. And there's kind of a relatively large cast of characters. I think the author Paul Theroux does a good job though of reminding you who these people are in relation to the narrator. So you don't, it's a little bit difficult to get confused on that end. 
uh, he, he does a good job making sure people aren't confused. Some of the things I didn't like, um, I felt like some of the characters who I thought were going to get stories and who kind of were built up as relatively interesting people didn't really get uh, their own story, which I thought was a little surprising in some instances. There's an instance of a gentleman who is in a band and is a bartender at the hotel. And I think, I don't think he gets like a full story of like his band and why he's here. Uh, I think you get some references to him to be a surfer, but that's really about it. I thought some of this, the, I thought the book was a little long. It's about 430 pages. Some of the stories were relatively close to one another in terms of tone and subject matter. I maybe would have kind of shortened this down to about 350 pages, maybe. So some of the stories kind of did feel superfluous. Um, there is a through line throughout the book, and if and I think that through line is really the character of Buddy. I think the book would have maybe been better served. I liked that through line, but I also would have liked more of some kind of genre element, whether it be like a mystery, uh, something to kind of connect from the the connecting tissues from one end to the other. So there's a kind of a pulse, propulsive reason to keep re- reading it. I enjoyed the stories, uh, but I definitely could see someone who wasn't digging some of these stories and kind of stopping halfway through because there's nothing really kind of continuing to pull them on other than the story. So if you hit two or three bad stories or uninteresting stories in a row, which I didn't, but I could see how people could, um, that may stop some people. So that, that was one of the things I felt was kind of lacking. Um, in all short stories collections, this one has stories that are interesting and stories that are less interesting. So I can't really blame the author too much for that. Cause I think that's a kind of a common thing. Um, and then just kind of from the realism perspective of it, the book has kind of a framing device that all these stories are coming from. The narrator, who is the manager of the hotel, is kind of a nameless character, uh, who's the former writer. Some of the details don't quite line, add up in, as far as him knowing the details, and you just have to kind of ignore that. You're like, well, would he realistically know all these things? And the answer is probably not, and that's just kind of a tick of the book that you kind of have to get over. At least I found myself just kind of getting over and moving on. I will say as far as the recommendations uh, for this, the other book before I forget that this reminded me of was a book called The Islands by Christopher Priest, which is kind of a similar thing, which in that story is kind of a history of a series of islands in this kind of fantastical world. Each of the islands has a history and there's a loose thread that connects them all together, but it's really more of, uh, felt like more of an exercise in writing kind of different uh, types of stories or different short stories. Um, I will say as far as a, a little bit of a warning, the book, this book, Hotel Honolulu, has a lot of sexual content. It has a chapter dealing with, I don't know if they would refer to it at the time. I think this book came out in 2001. I don't think they would have referred to it as human trafficking. I don't know if that was in the lexicon, but there's a, a chapter, kind of really difficult chapter to read actually about kind of human trafficking. There's kind of stories about prostitution. Uh, so if any of those things kind of uh, bother you. There's a lot of stories that deal with suicide in the book. Uh, so if any of those t- t- topics uh, kind of are sensitive to you, this may be a book to skip. Overall, I did enjoy it. I thought that none of those things were kind of taken lightly. And I think the character or the, the author does handle them with kind of the, the gravity and the respect they deserve. But if those are things that are hard for you to read, I understand. I just always want to tell people up front. So uh, if you like short stories, I think this is actually a pretty cool collection. Like I said, the kind of the good thing and the bad thing is the shorts, the stories are you know three to five pages. I think the writing style is pretty uh, concise with what he's trying to do, and I think that there is though enough personality in the characters to kind of keep you moving through the book. Um, so that's Hotel Honolulu. Uh, next time I'm going to be reading One of Us Is Lying by Karen M. McManus. And until next time. Uh, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my Twitter. Uh, Until next time, bye.